Good morning. There is a hero if you look inside your heart. You don't have to be afraid of who you are. There's an answer if you look within your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away. So what happens to you when you hear this song? What stirs in you when you hear these lyrics? You know, this is an ultimate unity song. Because see, here at Unity, we don't tell you how you should live or how you should believe. We invite you to find that hero within yourself. That hero, that, that part of you that overcomes all those things that life brings to you to awaken you. So when you think of a hero, when you think of these, this list of heroes, I hope you're somewhere on that list. Because that hero that you may see in others lies in you. A hero that has been someone in my life that I've actually um, come to see and to know was a man named Christopher Reeve. I think we all know Christopher Reeve. We all knew him as that hero that portrayed Superman. But when Christopher Reeve found that hero with himself, it was after his 1995 riding accident that left him a paraplegic. And I saw Christopher Reed with 2,000 other therapists at a, at a um, convention. And he said it was after that accident that he found that hero within him. That he found that sense of spirit of God within him. And from that place is where he was to engage that hero. And he spoke to this group of, of therapists saying that he didn't realize who he was as a spiritual being until after this experience. And Christopher Reeve is said to say about heroes that a hero is an ordinary person. I think she's engaged in her hero. An ordinary person that has the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. A person ordinary, just like you and me, that has the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. And friends, we're all heroes. All of us have had obstacles in our life that have felt overwhelming. Who has here hasn't been hurt? Who here hasn't felt betrayed or rejected? Who here hasn't dealt with grief, with illness, with many things that we felt that we had to overcome, and we did. And we're all sitting here because of that hero within us. But that often is the last place we look for that hero. So I say this morning that we're on a life path that's called the hero's journey. And if we're going to go on a journey, we often need a map. You know, if I'm going to go from here to Flagstaff, Arizona, where my sister lives, it's very helpful to have a map. You know, I could head south, and I could head west, and eventually I may drive through Flagstaff. But uh, if I have a map, I'm going to get there more quickly, and I may actually arrive before you know, two weeks go by. So do y'all remember those things that were called maps? There were those pieces of paper that everybody unfolded, and you could actually look at something, and then you could never get it back the way it was originally folded. Um, but nobody really buys those maps anymore. What do we do? We use map quest. Yes, map quest, because um, maps seem to be, uh, I wonder what ever happened to people through those maps. Oh well, they've become the map quest people. So map quest since we're not doing a literal journey from here to Flagstaff, we're on a spirit journey. I wonder if we could call it then Spirit Quest. And I wonder what it would look like if you put it in the program, and as we do with MapQuest, your destination, where you are, where you are today, and where you want to go. Where you are today, and, and that I want to go to this place of knowing that hero in me. Knowing that place that is that overcoming of obstacles place where I get to feel free to experience life rather than being afraid of, oh, I don't want that to happen because I don't know how to deal with it. You know, I want to be able to engage that hero. So what would that spirit quest look like? Well, as I pondered spirit quest, I thought of three aspects of this that could come out of your computer as you put in this information. Number one, we want to feel comfortable with spirit. 
We want to know that we are spirit, that everything about life is spirit, that, that we are beyond this bone and blood and flesh experience, as Christopher Reed did, and, and engage that hero, the spirit that's with us. Secondly, we want to be, become comfortable with the uncomfortable, because the hero's journey is doing something different. It's doing something new. It's engaging in that emotional place and doing something different and new. So becoming com comfortable with the uncomfortable. And finally, the third step in the spirit was is going to be to take that first step, to take some kind of action toward engaging the hero. OK, so let's look at this. The first thing is to become comfortable with spirit. You know, we are made in the image and likeness of God. We are. We know that from spirit. God has showed up as each and every one of you, and God is in everything. In fact, it's almost tricky to say God is something, because God is. Let, let's take a breath together. Okay? That, that's God. It's sort of God is the air. You know, the, we, the question, a good question is, who is breathing you? You know, God is everything when we step, in, when we step back and, and realize that God is life force. That's what, we, that's what we call it here. One presence, one power that's in everything. See, we're made in the image and likeness of God, but, but what do we do to God, to spirit? We make God in the image and likeness of us. We make God a person. We often make God a male, you know, far away, like Santa Claus with the naughty and nice list. You know, and how do you feel comfortable with the God of our making rather than that we are of God's making? It is that life force that's within us. And if we don't feel comfortable and, and one with spirit, we have a hard time engaging that hero. Because that hero is all about spirit. And you could end up like the story of this Jewish fellow. There was a CNN journalist that had heard about this fellow in Israel that had been at the Wailing Wall for a long, long time. And he, she thought, you know, let me go get a story about this guy. So she went over to the Wailing Wall, and she sees him coming toward the Wailing Wall with his cane, and he was there about 45 minutes. And she sees him walk away, and she says, hello, I'm a CNN from CNN. My name's Rebecca Smith. What's your name? And he said, Morris Fishbein. And she said, oh, Morris, great. You know, how long have you been coming to the Wailing Wall? And he said, 60 years every day. She said, 60 years? My heavens, what are you praying for? He said, oh, I pray that the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews will all live in peace. I pray for war to stop, for hatred to stop. I pray for my children and all children to grow up and love themselves and be kind to each other. And Rebecca says, my heavens, Morris, how do you feel after 60 years? And he says, I feel like I'm talking to a darn wall. <laughs> so if we don't feel this oneness with spirit, knowing that we are God, and so is everyone and everything, we feel very unsure about the spirit quest, about our hero's journey. And we're wondering, we're questioning, should I do this, should I do that? And as we just, in our 9 o'clock class, someone was just asking, what's my life purpose? And we were talking about something that inspired her. She's a quilter. And she said, yeah, I love quilting. And she's created all these quilts. And I said, that's your life purpose. And often that hero's journey is, in, is willing, being willing to believe that inspiration is important, that passion is your guide, that that is what you want to listen to, and to have the courage to be inspired and know that that's enough. You know, we have this experience. We're the only creatures that have consciousness, that know, that wake, that know ourselves, and we have self-awareness. So what we can do is we actually think there is a question to be or not to be. You know, there's no not to be. You are being, and you need to keep up with yourself. There's an Indian axiom that says, God sleeps in the rocks, God awakens in the plants, God walks around in the animals, but God knows itself as human beings. So we have this experience, this absolute requirement to know who you are, to know that hero that is within you.